What's up guys, it's Anshul here from Camp K12. You might be wondering what my drone is doing next to my veggies and my fruits. Today I want to show you how you can teach a drone to actually follow a veggie or a fruit. So I want to be able to take a banana, hold it in front of the drone, move it side to side, up and down, same thing with the carrot, and have the drone automatically follow the fruit or the veggie. Fruit, veggie. So let's get started with the banana. So this is the same banana that I was holding in my hands earlier. But you can see this time, it has a thick yellow outline around it and a red cross in the middle, indicating the center of the shape. As I rotate the banana, move it up and down, even move it further and closer, or even if I put my fingers in the middle, creating two shapes out of it, it's recognizing the shape of the banana based on its color. Now this is being done on the webcam on my laptop, but it could also be done on the camera on my drone, which is right here. And that's what we're going to have to do if we want to make the drone be able to follow the banana around. So let's do it. Here's the banana that we want to track. Here is the drone and the camera that we're going to use to track the banana. This is the brains of my system. This is my computer. And right now what you're seeing on the screen is a web app written by CamK12. It, it's essentially a local server which is receiving a live stream of images from the drone, processing them to calculate the outline of the banana, and sending instructions back to the drone about how the drone should move in pursuit of the banana. As you can see, that yellow outline on the banana is there the same way it was on our webcam. But this is the drone's live feed. The next and final step for us is just to put the drone on the ground, take off, and then turn banana following on using this button on the left. What this is going to do is use this outline we're tracking and actually start moving left and right, up and down in pursuit of that outline. So let's actually put this down on the ground and do that. I'm on the ground now with the drone and the banana that we want to track. When I place the banana in front of the drone's field of view, you can see that it's still calculating the yellow outline. So now let's take off and then start the tracking. Let's start tracking the banana now. So now I'm gonna make it go down a bit. Come down. There you go. Let's make it come up again. There you go. Up. Up. Let's go to the right. There you go. Let's go left. Let's go left. Nice. Left. Let's go down again. Down. Down. Nice. And then let's land it. That drone just followed a banana. That was pretty awesome. Now I have all these other fruits and veggies here. Let's see if you can do the same thing with a different object. So I'm gonna go with this cabbage next. I like the roundness and size of this thing. Let's see if we can teach our drone to recognize a green circular spherical object and follow that around. And then we'll have some fun with some of these other ones. Maybe a tomato, an apple, carrot even. Let's give it a shot. Go up. Nice. Up. 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 Come down. To the right. Nice. Now let's go to the left. Nice. Let's go up again. Up. Let's go down. Come down. And let's bring this all the way down for our landing. And let's land this thing.
Who would have thought that we could teach a drone to fly after household objects, vegetables, and fruits like these? When you saw it on camera, it might have actually seemed too straightforward or too easy. But it turns out there's a lot going on behind the scenes. What we have done and what we've demonstrated just now scratches the surface of a very vast field known as computer vision. Computer vision is all about teaching a computer how to take an image from a webcam like the one on our drone and extracting meaning from that. In our case, we wanted to take our drone's live feed and be able to draw a boundary around any of these objects so that we could identify its center and based on how the center of that object moves around, move the drone accordingly. There are many ways you can do computer vision and object detection. For example, one way is based on identification of salient features. So for a banana, it might actually be the shape at the end right here. For the gourd, it might actually be the proportions, the fact that this is so much wider than it is tall, or the curly part right here. These are salient features. In our case, because the objects we were dealing with were fairly homogenous in their color, we decided to use an approach called color filtration. The way color filtration works is you take an image comprised of a vast spectrum of colors and you pass it through a filter such that all that's left at the end is the object with the colors that you want. Now let's walk through the specific color filtration process that we followed in going from our drone image to an actual object contour that we could track around the screen. So here on my computer screen, I have, I'm using my webcam to show you different stages of the color filtration. So here's a cabbage being seen by my webcam. You can see there are six different images here. The first image under the step one window is the original image. As I move the cabbage around, it follows. Step six, the final image is that same cabbage with a thick yellow outline. And you'll remember this from when we were doing our drone tracking. The images in between are showing you the intermediate outputs on our way to the final image. The second step is that same image converted to a different color space. The HSV color space is hue saturation value and its beauty lies in the fact that you can, you can interpret different shades of green as green. So if there's shadows, if there's glare, you can still measure that and filter that by green which means you get a cabbage that is fully formed rather than cut out where the shadow is or where the highlights are. So that's the HSV step. From HSV, we, we actually filter it down to a black and white image where white are the pixels that pass the test, black are the pixels that don't. We choose those filters here on the left side in this CAMK12 panel that you see. There are three sliders for hue, saturation, value, and moving them back and forth allows us to select which pixel should pass, which should not. So here you see we get pretty close to the final answer. You can see there's a, a round shape, the cabbage, with a few other white particles floating around. That's where step four comes in. This is a process of dilation and erosion with the purpose of getting rid of those extra particles floating around. So dilation means you take the cabbage pixels that are passing the test in step three and dilate them, expand them. So you get one white blob without those holes that you see in the step three window. Erosion means you take those mini pixels that are floating around outside in step three and you just get rid of them because they're not big enough. So step four, we can see a blob that represents the cabbage. Step five is an easier task. It's just drawing, it's edge detection on that blob to figure out the contour. And step six is tracing that contour on top of the original image so that we can show what shape or object we have identified and its center. So the, the yellow outline identifies the object contour and that red crosshairs in the middle is its center. Our drone was tracking these different fruits by calculating that contour and the center and calculating the speed and the direction at which that contour was moving left and right, up and down and front and back and moving the drone accordingly. The computer vision algorithms that we implemented and the color filtration that we did were actually built on top of a computer vision library called OpenCV. The open stands for open source, the CV for computer vision. So anyone can access this at any point. It's free, well-documented, and I really encourage you guys to check it out. You'd be surprised the kinds of 
sophisticated looking things you can do and the powerful object recognition and motion tracking you can do with very simple programming. All right, folks, that's all from my side. I hope you guys have a good time. See ya. Forgot something.